In a construction project, what are the necessary steps when we are in the execution phase or in other words, when we are in the building phase? It's Christian from Vision 6D and for me it's always a pleasure to exchange my expertise in project management and to share some of my knowledge. We are going to dive into a real construction site together and see what steps are necessary from start to finish. A construction project is composed of several phases. A study phase, an implementation or realization phase, followed by the operation phase. We take as an example the construction of a housing estate. The realization phase or construction phase is under the responsibility of the client, whether it is a public or private project. The owner can resort to a general contractor who will be the project manager, or use a group of subcontractors and then accumulate the functions of project owner and project manager. The whole process can be divided into seven steps. The first one is the planning or preparatory step. The general contractor will carefully prepare all the necessary elements and interventions. He organizes the materials in order to avoid waste, optimize logistics, reduce costs, ensure the safety of those involved and save time. The planning phase consists of planning all the necessary work that the contractor will carry out to complete the works on site. For our example, the construction of a set of homes, the preparatory phase lasted a bit over six months. It was performed by the project manager and his teams. The important milestones were already defined in previous phases. Then they resort to a more detailed planning by defining the logical chronology of the tasks. And for this, we use the network diagram in Microsoft Project. More and more often, we resort to the use of lean planning methodology. In the study phase, part of the planning has already been done. It is carried out during planning workshops. Each trade that will intervene on the site is represented. This allows the specialists to be directly involved in the creation of the planning. The planning is not done alone, but as a team. This planning allows to define the resources and means necessary to the realization and to prepare the calls for tender. For projects of a certain scale, the planning is part of the contracts signed with the project manager or with the subcontractors. By resources, we mean human and material means. The human resources are the needs of the sites in terms of manpower or work teams that will intervene. The project manager or the planning team will prepare a list of the equipment needed for the site, with the cranes, lifting equipment, scaffolding, etc. He will plan the mode of acquisition, buy or rent the equipment, and choose the most profitable method for the company. He will determine the duration of the interventions and this will be reflected in the schedule. The site manager will prepare the list of materials he will need breeze blocks, cement, steel, sand, gravel, timber, concrete, plaster, paint, etc. Then the supply is done directly by contacting the suppliers or by invitation to tender. As quotations and bids are entered, the project manager can refine the cost estimations. On this diagram, we see the different costs happening during the different stages. And we see that the most expensive stage is the construction one. The site installation plan organizes the different locations for the storage of materials, the access roads, reinforcement area, concreting area, maintenance of the material, check rooms and staff canteen, offices, 
sanitary facilities, water and electricity networks. The project manager prepares the necessary documents for the opening of the construction site. He notifies the building permit department of the start of the construction site. He obtains the necessary authorization for water and electricity connections. Each supplier adapts its planning for its team and equipment. The final plans are established. The second step is the installation of the building site. The surveyor will delimit the land. The office is installed for the meetings, the plans and the computers for the follow-up of the building site. The check room and the canteens as well as the sanitary facilities are installed. The accesses are arranged for the pedestrians and the machines. The various connections for water and electricity are set up. The fences and barriers of the construction site are installed. Step 3 is the building implementation. The surveyor determines the location of the buildings on the land. He will use the ground plan which gives the limit of the buildings in relation to the limits of the ground. Step 4. The structural work. These works are generally those of the civil engineering which ensure the resistance and the stability of the structure of the buildings. This work is divided into two categories, the infrastructure and the superstructure. We start with the infrastructure, which includes all the works which are below the natural level zero. We start with the excavations or earthworks. Rocks or earth are removed depending on the composition of the soil. There can be different operations, stripping of topsoil, tracing the axis of the project and the location of the foundation, then the excavations of the foundations are made. Types of excavations. The depth depends on the type of structure. The type of excavation depends on the structure too. We frequently find excavation in superficial excavation, trench excavation, shaft excavation, pole excavation. Sanitation. Then the trenches necessary for the connections of the various networks are made. Drinking water, wastewater, electricity and gas. The surveyor passes to check the levels. Then we move on to the foundation work. We start with the concrete of cleanliness, make and lay the reinforcement of the foundations, realize the formwork of the foundations, then we pour the concrete with the pump trucks. It must be vibrated and left to dry. Then we'll come to the formwork removal. We will make the walls and their insulation for the basements. The work of the walls and the stairs of the basements are realized, as well as the pillars and bearing walls for the ground floor slab. With the slab that covers the basement, the infrastructure works are finished. It is the work of the elevations that begins. They are part of the superstructure. For each furrow, we find the sequence. Formwork, reinforcement, concrete pouring for the columns, beams and floor. We also have the team of masons who started the exterior walls. The next step is the construction of the facades and roofs. By installing the doors and windows, the building is insulated from water, frost and air. This is what we call waterproof, frostproof and airproof. This means that the work on the structure is finished. We start the finishing work. This work has nothing to do with the strengths of the building. It is the interior fittings that will make them habitable and usable. During this phase, various trades are involved in the project. The project manager must skillfully manage all those different activities. On site, on the building site, there is a planning activity that plans the activities for the next week, the next three weeks or the next six weeks. This uses lean methodology and involves directly the team leaders. 
and is really efficient and really appreciated by those people. Finishing works include the following. Interior partitions, thermal insulation of exterior walls from the interior, thermal and acoustic insulation of interior partitions, interior carpentry, interior coverings. Among the technical finishing works we find high and low voltage electrical installations, plumbing and sanitation, ventilation, smoke evacuation, heating and air conditioning, installation of electrical and home automation equipment. We see that the development of finishing works follows a cycle that we find for each floor. Step 6. External arrangement. This step concerns what surrounds the building, like terrace, um, common areas. The pool area will be at the background of what we see, and of course pedestrian and car accesses. So that's it, we reached the end of the work and we are into the final step, that is to say repacking. As you see on the picture, we are still not so far in the project, but what is awaited then is a huge cleaning, disinstalling and dismounting of fences and barricades, base of life, and all those elements will be removed. That is to say, everything that was set in place just for the building, for building, will be removed. With this, it's a pleasure for me to have shared some of my knowledges about project management and I hope to see you soon for a next module. Bye-bye!